you for the honor of speaking at this very special occasion to Mr. Dubey's about the presentation in these to our Rashtrapatiji of the first copy of the book, Building the book. a Just the book is World. In four parts. Just the book World that's order, being presented is unique in many ways, change, as is the person sector, in whose honor it has been compiled. With Mr. Dubey, it reflects some of the major themes of Professor Dubey's life work as a public servant and a public intellectual. On the world economy, from across the globe on international together, trade and monetary essays, systems, security, building a just South world. Asian cooperation, Some and not just strong this work as a diplomat, global as financial and trading center in India, and but as a professor of international relations Some and as president of the Council of China for Social Development. And its consequences. Uh, there are it is to Mr. Dubey that we owe promoting significant and aspects of India's economic diplomacy. The social While the beginnings of bilateral economic diplomacy might go further back, and it was Mr. Dubey and a few other pioneers who recognized in the 70s the that to be effective, economic diplomacy must also concern itself with the international system policies and with building with an equitable world order. It was this conviction that drove all in all many important important yes, pioneering yeah, efforts in the UN and other multilateral organizations, systemic which are acknowledged by former order. UN Secretary General Boutros Boutrosvali in his introduction to the volume. Indeed, the volume has an impressive list of contributors, which is tribute to, to Mr. Dubey's sustained influence free in these fields. And to relatively a few high words about the book. The book is in four prices. parts. A just but world order, peace, security and climate change, as we social sector, and two interviews with Mr. Dubey, where he speaks honestly and movingly about his life and work and if philosophy. In the developed world Contributors from across the globe have come together to write essays relating to building a just world. If the Some make a strong plea for change China, in global financial and trading systems and, if we witness and propose alternatives. An Some deal with the emergence of China and India and its consequences. Led by the G20. There are significant contributions on promoting disarmament and the climate change and negotiation. The, led and the social the sector essays critique privatization of health reform. services and the displacement caused by mega projects. There are sharp the discussions on the thwarting of scientific thinking and by policies. irrational forces this is more and an analysis of neoliberal policies which come with authoritarian politics and communal mobilization. All in all, the essays here are a timely reform, reminder of the importance of systemic reform and change in the global the order, the something that developing country elites have ignored for almost two essays decades here after 1990. And when they got used to an open international trading that, system, and free capital flows, to and to relatively high growth there rates and high commodity prices. In the present global but order. fat years Next are followed by lean ones, as we have rediscovered since the global economic crisis of 2008, which continues and, and is also a crisis the of the neoliberal prescription. If recovery in the developed world since 2008 has been slower than any other recovery since World War II, and if the economies of developing and emerging countries, including China, are today also affected, and if we witness the rise of protectionism and unprecedented global financial imbalances, it's also partly because the world led by the G20 failed to use the crisis to reform the global economic order, and the multilateral system led by the UN has been unraveled and failed to perform. The essays also reflect another important aspect of Mr. Dubey's work, namely the domestic roots of economic and international policy. This is more than the idea that foreign policy is driven by domestic compulsions this is or that all foreign policy is local politics, many as someone once said. So they all we often forget that democracy at home, sustainable development, international peace, and the nature of the international order are interlinked and indivisible. We'll Essays here remind us of how important that connection is. Problem in and once again, a look at the state of the world around us tells us how essential it is that we begin to act accordingly. There is profound inequity in the present global order, inequity in the distribution of economic, military and political power. 
there is inequity in access to the fruits of development and science and in the enjoyment of security by different peoples within and between societies and nations. It is therefore impossible for India to be a status quo power in these circumstances. But at the same time, as Mr. Dubé has always argued, India is not a rejectionist power that stands outside the global order. Instead, no her interests lie in working to change, reform and, and improve the, the global order. Volume, Events around us are forcing change, whether it's when the, the rise of China, India's development, the continuing agenda, crisis of the developed economies, or the evolution the of technology. Raman Subhan has an essay on changing economic trends in Asia, which now make it possible to envision an alternative, more just, multipolar order. This is a transformative vision shared by many contributors, history. though they all recognize the, the difficulties Chinese in the way of its achievement. If, as argued Asia here, developing countries are better to placed today than in the 70s and 80s, how did the rest of the world feel about will change in the order come peacefully? The, scale may be different the practical today, problem in building a just order today is that while economic power has shifted its locus, military, political and ideological power has so not. Hence, significance Do of what Shamsaran and others have to say in their the essays on disarmament and Strangely, security, for all the which are intrinsically linked and critical, critical to building a new order. In any case, and positive change in the international system is not the natural or inevitable the result of the operation of the market or a byproduct and of the hegemony. Pragmatism of as Mr. Dubey has said, a just power. world order and needs to be no deliberately conceived, level for designed the and brought the into existence. The justice that we have failed to build a just world order so other, far is no reason not to continue to try. Level. And there the lies the value of this volume, King recognizing his contributions, do have place coming when the UN is about to adopt a post-2015 agenda for sustained development. These are ideas the one additional essay that I when would have liked to see in this collection is an answer to the question, the are the disruptions, work, consequences and discontents of this round of globalization worse or different reading, from those of previous waves of globalization and practitioners, but for the interest The Indian and Chinese in traditions have civilizational frameworks linking Asia with the rest of the world through cultural and economic exchanges. How did the rest of the world feel about that? For receiving us here While the scale may be different today, amplified by technology, to are there historical parallels to the issues raised in this volume? I ask for this so that we, the re-emerging powers, do not repeat the mistakes of the past that we now criticize ourselves. Strangely, for all the discontent and gloom expressed about the consequences of globalization and neoliberal policies in the book, it left me optimistic. The dominant realist view of international relations and the naked pragmatism of the superpower and putative superpower have little or no place at the policy level for the morality, the decency, the, the justice and the common virtues that we expect of each other at the personal or the individual level. The alternative lines of thinking suggested here in this book do have place for them. That is their strength and the secret of their longevity. These are ideas whose time has come when we are in the midst of profound and fundamental change in the world system. With these words, therefore, let me congratulate the editors on their work and on bringing out a volume which should be required reading, not just for intellectuals, scholars, and practitioners, but for the interested laymen in India and in other developing countries. And in conclusion, I'm sure that I speak for all of us here in expressing our profound gratitude to our president for receiving us here in Rashtrapati Bhavan and most graciously agreeing to accept the first copy of the book. Thank you. You can appreciate uh, this is uh, uh, the rarest of the rare moments in my life. The first citizen of India has uh, agreed to grace or really gracing the occasion for the release uh, of a book uh, brought out in honor of a common citizen of India. That is uh, where speaks volume of the magnanimity of 
our president and of the strength of Indian democracy. I regard this as a, an enormous privilege. It also reflects uh, uh, his affection for me, of which I have been aware through long periods of my life and which I cherish very dearly. I am, uh, uh, as you can imagine, uh, at this moment I am overwhelmed by a sense of deep uh, humility and the, the, the two lines of uh, the very first poem of Gitanjali of Kabi Guru Ravindnath Tagore come to me readily and that is Shakal Ahankar Hayamar Dubao Chokher Jole. I cannot do anything better than that. I am uh, most grateful to Kapilaji for uh, uh, having agreed to uh, release the book. Uh, she is the embodiment of uh, what is uh, the finest, the most beautiful and the unifying in the Indian culture and in the world culture. She has propounded it, she has uh, added to the knowledge on this and she is, uh, reflects it in the way she conducts her life. Uh, my deep gratitude and respect to Kapilaji. Uh, I think there can be very uh, few recognitions uh, uh, in life uh, which are greater than that uh, given by your peers in the area in which you work. And therefore, uh, the publication of this book uh, by the three co-intellectuals, if I can use this word, uh, or co-scholars uh, is one of the greatest honors that uh, I could have received in my life. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the initiative that they have taken and the tremendous amount of work extending over almost five years that they put in the making of this book. It is not uh, for me to judge uh, uh, my achievements or lack of it in my long career. But uh, one thing that I can look back uh, with a measure of uh, satisfaction and it is that in uh, the work that I have done in my life, particularly as a civil servant on behalf of the government of India, I have tried to combine service to the nation with uh, contributions to building a just world, which is the title of this uh, volume. And uh, in this, uh, I have done nothing very remarkable. I have simply been uh, moved by the great Indian vision of uh, one world and uh, welfare of all. Uh, this uh, we inherited uh, those of us who came to government after the independence from the leader of India's independence uh, movement. Uh, I joined the service very soon after that. So their words were very fresh in my mind. I often recalled Mahatma Gandhi's uh, famous line when he was dragged to address the Asian Relations Conference in 1947 and that is I would not like to live in a world which is not a one world. All of us recall that uh, epoch-making sentence of Nehruji's extempore speak, speech in this conference that is, uh, no longer shall the Asians be the British nurse in the chancelleries of the world. This is what inspired me. As a student, I was following it and this is what I tried to follow. I did not do anything uh, extraordinary. These ideas and these ideals were, moved me when I was, uh, for example, contributing to the drafting of the 
trade policies governing international trade in the first UNCTAD, international development strategy for the 1980s, the global consensus on the relationship between disarmament and development of which Mr. Nutwar Singh here is aware, the vision for South Asian Economic Union, to name only a few. I would conclude by saying that uh, uh, I don't see this service to the nation and uh, contribution to building a world order in compartments. I regard these two endeavors as a, a part and parcel of pursuing the same purpose of improving the conditions of the people and bringing justice from all over the world. I also feel that an endeavor in one of these areas is an instrument for carrying forward the objective in the other area. For, as you all know, that uh, a national interest is best served in a just and equitable global environment. And uh, one's ability to build or contribute to building such an environment depends critically upon the bolstering of national strength. So I do hope that uh, uh, in the coming years, in future, the pursuit of these uh, mutually reinforcing ideas and ideals will continue to guide our national policy and our diplomatic endeavors. Thank you. It's indeed a privilege for me to have this opportunity of welcoming such a very distinguished gathering <coughs> to Rashtrapati Bhavan on a very happy occasion with the release of a publication which speaks of the desire of millions, perhaps billions of people who aspire, maybe a dream, but who aspire to have this dream fulfilled one day, to have a just world. This is a volume in honor of Professor Muchkun Dube, who richly deserves it. I had the privilege of working with him as I had many of you who are assembled here this morning in my public career in different capacities. My first official visit to Bangladesh and to finalize, in fact I put the signature, everything was finalized by the persons like Professor Muskun Dube and others. I was then the Commerce Minister and the agreement which was signed during Mujib's time that lapsed and it was the regime of the Jiaur Rahman I think sometimes in 1980 or maybe 81 and I saw personally as I knew little bit of Bangladesh and had personal acquaintance with many persons there that how deep respect Professor Dube had with the people of that country and how intimately he understood they sense of their problems 
and connecting them with the problems of the developing world. Neo liberated colonies, those who joined the Indian civil uh, service, particularly the diplomatic service, in those days. On the one hand, they were fortunate to have the opportunity to save the foreign policy, trade policy in the international context of the largest functional democracy of the world. But at the same time, it was very challenging that a country hardly having any resources a country which is rich in resources but inhabited by the largest number of poor people when they are talking of high moral people did not take it very easily and it was not an easy task for them to convince the international community not only the rationality of it, but with the depth of emotion, commitment and firm belief in the principles which they propagated. I am frankly admitting I did not have the time of going through the book in details because it requires time. And when I received the copy, Unfortunately, I did not have it. I will go through it as I do and surely I, I would find not only interesting but also to help me in understanding many of the complex problems of the world today. World is not equal, we know. That's the hard reality we accept every day. And it is not because of us, but despite us. But at the same time, we shall have to recognize that we will have to live with the situation and do our best how to improve it. As Professor Dubey very aptly and most appropriately quoted the Tagore's line in Bengali and I am also tempted to quote a line but not from Tagore but another post Rabindranath Bengali poet Professor Sudhindranath Dattu, who wrote on a very interesting issues, but one line to my mind is appropriate and more than often, particularly at the meeting of the UNFCC on climate change, it comes, Apore Paona Adai Kureche Age Amadir Pori Denashus Bar Bar. Mr. Kareem will understand and some of you may understand but for the larger audience I would like to say it's not our fault. Somebody else did it but we are to be at the burden. We are to be at the burden of paying heavily from us for the misdeeds of others. Many years ago, Gandhiji warned the international community by saying, in his usual way of conveying the prophetic message, that Mother Earth has enough resources to meet the need of everybody. But surely, not the greed of everybody, 
and we have to pay for the greed of few in the wanton destructions of nature and adversely affecting the climate this is not one issue many other issues as an ordinary student of history i have noticed how in different forms the exploitation took place in this unjust and inequal world and continued flow of resources from the poor countries to the rich countries therefore those who dream of and work for creating a just world they deserves salute from us and surely professor dubey is one of them i salute him for his contribution in framing the policies and the contributors of this volume in understanding and appreciating his role and also highlighting the issues which we cannot keep under carpet and we shall have to address it thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the contributors and the editors of building a just world i express our deepest gratitude to our president for accepting the first copy of the volume his appreciation of the issues that the contributors to this volume have highlighted makes this endeavor truly worthwhile we are indeed grateful to kapila ji for finding time for a very busy schedule to release the book kapila ji has always strongly supported our work and her presence today gives us immense satisfaction we are very happy that mr shiv shankar menon was able to participate in this event to share his thoughts with us got back from delhi yesterday after a hectic schedule and we are indeed grateful to him we have, we profoundly thank all our friends who have joined us on this happy occasion your gracious presence has made this event a truly memorable one we express our deep gratitude to our friend in the president secretariat for helping us in organizing this event they guided us at every step and helped us in addressing all the details we thank our publishers orion black swan ms nandina rao ms mimi choudhury and ms nilanjana mojumdar in particular for their unstinted support in getting the volume in the present shape our sincere thanks to the director and staff of the council of social, for social development for taking care of all the logistical uh, needs necessary for organizing this event finally i thank my co-editors my esteemed seniors professor manoranjan mohanty and mr vinod khanna without whose tireless efforts the idea of producing this volume would not have become a reality thank you